Now if you'll join in the call to worship. O oh Lord, you keep track of our wanderings, our challenges, our sadness, and sorrow. We May we hear God's promise to us today, how God loved us long before we loved God. When we hear and see and witness God's tremendous love for all. Help us have an intimate experience with God's love today, this week, every day. And in doing so, trust in the love God has for us. Let's pray together. Holy God, be present with us today. Remind us that your Holy Spirit is always, always, always with us. May we hear your promise of love that is wider than we can imagine, higher than the heavens, deeper than possible, and forever than we can expect. Amen. Join us again in hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. Well done, that sounded terrific. And now if you'll join in on the Apostles' Creed found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. You may be seated.
Our biblical readings today come from Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its, its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that love, this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the, to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And then from 1 John 4, 7 through 16. God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Now my little church mouse and I will go back to the pew. Let's go. We're, we're all good. We are definitely good. Shall we pray together? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have grandchildren too, so, you know, it's all good. I think there are certain events in our lives when uh, that often become seared into our memories. Things that, uh, certain events that happen that we remember where we were, what was happening when we experienced that particular situation. Um, and just think about what maybe some of those events might be for you. There is a good possibility that you knew where and what you were doing when you heard with this news. Now I realize some of these events may not apply to everyone, but let me just share a couple of them. 9-11. When the space shuttle blew up and all the crew was killed, including the first teacher who was to go on a space mission into outer space. The day virtually the world shut down when COVID-19 took on a pandemic status. Now, those that may be a hair bit more mature may remember these days as well. The day JFK was shot. When Ronald Reagan was shot. And we can think of uh, certain other different events like this. I'd call them significant world events that have happened that, you know, they're just indicative of we remember those events where we were, what we were doing, and things like that. But then there's also what I'm going to call the personal events, the things that happen in our individual lives that may not be on the same level or the same scale as these worldwide events, but when these things happen, we remember where we were, what we were doing, and the personal connection and attachment that happened at that very minute. And this happened to me a number of weeks ago. I was on my way to Madison, and I was on my way to go see Pastor Carol, who served here at this church for many years. 
She was at the hospital. She had been moved over to UW Hospital from Meritor. And I had a couple errands to run on my way to Madison. And I was taking care of those errands on my way to go visit her at the hospital. Um, I had seen her several times in the last week. And um, yet that morning, my phone rang when I was doing one of those errands. And on the other end of the phone was Pastor Carol's daughter, Kathy. And she shared with me that day that she had just received word that Pastor Carol had passed away. And I will always remember where I was, what I was doing, and what was the emotions and the feelings that I was feeling in that very minute. And even while I was on the phone with Kathy that day, I also clearly remember the very first thoughts that I was having. I was having this conversation with Kathy, but you know how there's like this private conversation going on in your brain, even when you're having a conversation with another person? And that is what was happening to me at that moment. I have shared this statement time and time again, probably at every funeral I have ever been involved in. I've believed this line for years and years and years. And yet on that day, once again, it was seared into my conscientious that this is not just a line that I should say. It's a line that I should live and believe. And this is the line. We call today the present because every day is a gift. Think of those words. Why do we call today the present? Because it's a gift. And on that Monday morning, the morning that Pastor Carol passed away, there were thousands of thoughts going through my brain I've had millions of thoughts since then about lots of different things, and yet this one thought keeps coming back to me. This very day that we have together today is the present, and yet it's a gift. Now, I'll admit, the days going up to that day, was I fully engaged in realizing that every day is a gift? Do I embrace that this is a gift, Diane, and that I better make and embrace this gift the way it truly is. Unfortunately, I know that I have failed too many days to treat today like the gift that it is. And so once again, I was shoved into the reality of, Diane, are you embracing this day as a gift? Am I handling it intentionally and carefully? Am I honoring this very day by doing the very best things and the things that matter the most? Or am I getting caught up in all the minutia of life that really is just a distraction? I think we have to ask ourselves this question daily. Am I spending my gifts, my times, my talents, my resources in such a way that what I do and how I live reflects my life and what is truly most important to me? If I'm not doing this, then what changes must I make so that what I believe and how I live are two sets of wheels that are going in the same direction? and not wheels that are going in different directions of life. Is what I say most important actually the choices that I'm making? Now, I think there's a daily challenge in all of this of knowing exactly how and what to do so that we can keep those two sets of wheels going in the same direction. Um, it's true for us as individuals. It's true for those of us that have a life partner. It's also true for us as churches and what we do in our local faith communities, our individual congregations. It's also important what we do in the larger community in which we live. And so how do we discern 
how to live our faith in such a way that those that we encounter throughout the day know that faith is a huge part of our daily lives and that we can witness to our faith whether we use words or not. Faith can look all good well in writing. The sage advice we find in the Bible is helpful and important, but how we hack it in the real world, where there is evil that is very present, where bad things happen to good people, and sometimes we have absolutely no control over the things that happen in our lives. How do we navigate faith through all of that and so much more? We have all had those events in life that could cause a variety of things to spin out of control, individually, for us as families, within our churches, even within our communities and um, our world and our country, Gosh, there's thousands of, and millions of things that can pull us away from what is important. I hope we can also think of that person that had um, some awful or tragic things in their life, but yet they stayed true to their faith. And when I think of one of those people that I know in my life, I think of this wonderful lady named Charlotte. And Charlotte used to attend one of the churches that I served, uh, she was in her 30 years old, she was in her 30s, uh, pregnant with her third child when her first husband passed away very suddenly. She uh, went back to school, got a teaching license. She had three small kids she needed to support, got a teaching job. Later on, um, she married the principal of one of the schools that she taught at. Um, a couple weeks before Pastor Carol passed away. Actually, Pastor Carol, I went to Charlotte's 100th birthday party, and then I went and visited Carol at the hospital that same day. Here's a woman who has lost two husbands, has lost two sons, two of her three children are dead, and two years ago she was still mowing her lawn. I'm not joking. And yet every day this woman gets up and she knows that today is called the present because it's a gift. And if there's a woman who could be very disgruntled by her faith, it could be Charlotte. I'm sure she's at church this morning sitting in a pew praising and worshiping God. And so, do we take these days and treat them as special? And even when those awful, terrible things happen in our lives, do we still get up and know that we have something to hang on to because we have faith? And this is the truth, I believe. Any one of us could be one bad decision away from something awful happening in our lives, things in our control, things out of our control. So how do we find words? How do we find the actions? How do we make the choices when something overwhelming or out of our control could become a nemesis that causes us to go down the wrong path? How do we avoid? How do we avoid those things? Or how do we make different choices? How do we find a nugget of peace and comfort when things feel terribly unsettling? Now, my goal for us today is not to have a memorial service for Pastor Carol. We're going to do that in two weeks on June 24th, okay? But I think that this has been an event in my life and maybe in some of your people's lives, because she served here for how many years and touched many of your people's lives, didn't she? It is a time for us to take stock, to reevaluate, to rededicate our lives to the things that are most important. 
And because she was a part of this faith community, I am 100% confident that she left a little bit of herself behind here because that's what Pastor Carol did at every faith community she was involved in. So when I thought about what we could do today in our time together, my goal is not that um, I answer all of our questions about grief or Pastor Carol's death or any of those things. I can't tell you why this happened. That's way above my pay grade, quite honestly. But what I can share with you is that when unfortunate things happen in our lives, we have someone that we can take on the journey with us, that walks with us, that makes sure we are never alone. So just take a minute, a few seconds, and think personally. Where are you feeling alone these days? Is there a context in which you feel that your faith is maybe struggling? What is that thought that's been nagging in the back of your brain that feels impossible to answer? Where do you run out of bandwidth and the capacity to understand and process? Maybe it's related to death. Maybe it's another loss in your life, totally different than a, a death. Maybe it's a broken relationship or a severed connection because of a disagreement. Maybe something has happened that was completely out of your control to a loved one that has just made things a little more challenging. Suffering sorrow happens for many different reasons, not just in the context of death. And when these things happen, we may find ourselves struggling, unsure what to do next, questioning a variety of things. We may ask ourselves, what is next? How do I make sense of this? What is my appropriate response? Now, if you don't have any of those thoughts in your mind, hallelujah, praise the Lord, wait a minute, it's going to come. It always does. Your day will come. Maybe you're in a place right now where you're kind of getting through that, and you're like, I'm on the upswing now. Good for you. Celebrate it. Or if you're feeling a bit banged up or battled or missing something in your life, hold on, please. I can't say that today is going to be better, but eventually I do believe over time the stigma, pain, and hurt will ease, if only just a little bit. I believe that when we are going through a difficult time, the basis of a hurt and pain and suffering always comes back to love. When we love someone, like Pastor Carol, and they are gone, why do we miss them? Because we love them. Because we miss something about how they loved us. When we witness someone going through a heart-wrenching loss, our heart bleeds for them because we love them. Maybe it's not you personally, but maybe it's someone in your connection or your family unit. Some of you may be aware, uh, a few weeks ago, there was a seventh grade girl from Reedsburg that was killed while she was getting on the school bus. An awful, terrible, tragic situation. Our oldest granddaughter was a classmate of hers. Imagine being 12, 13 years old and trying to make sense of losing your friend. Us adults can't figure it out. And I'm, you know, we're watching our granddaughter struggle right now. Maybe someone's made a choice that you don't agree with. How can you continue to love them anyways? You can't help someone unless they help themselves. But because of love, you are still very much affected by this situation. How do we wrap our heads around when people make choices that we don't agree with, and yet we still love them? In the last few weeks, one of the things I've gone back to repeatedly is this prayer that 
Dr. Bean shared with us from the book of Ephesians. It's actually a prayer that Paul wrote. I've looked at multiple translations of this prayer, wanting the right translation, and I keep on thinking I want to take this verse from this translation and this verse from this translation. I'm not sure we're supposed to do that. But it's helpful to look at different translations because they give us different words. In one translation, this section of the book of Ephesus is titled, God Prays for Love to Overflow. I love that. We need an abundance of love in our lives at all times. We need love for ourselves just as we need to be able to overflow and share love with those around us. Shortly after Pastor Carol passed away, I was amazed how many people reached out to me and said they were so amazed at how Carol loved them or reached, you know, was able to share with them this deep sense of love. There should be no shame in sharing love with one another because we all need to be able to feel and experience that love. So these are the words, again, from that book of Ephesians. Just a different translation I'd like to share with us. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth, and I pray that he will unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your love. Look at that last sentence. What do we need that Jesus' love will become the very root and source of our love? Friends, when this is the type of love that we experience, there's no room for hate or jealousy or disrespect or anger. When we know this love, then we do not withhold kindness and compassion and empathy and gentleness. We find ways to support and love one another, even if it's challenging for us. And we let love overcome the hurdles where we may disagree. When Jesus is the source of our love, we're more patient with one another. And when something irritates us, believe me, I have plenty that irritates me, we choose to love them the way they are. We lower our expectations because guess what? Someone else is lowering their expectations of us. One att attribute that I loved and admired about Pastor Carol was her ability to love everybody. <laughs> her kindness was amazing. Her caring was unusual. Sometimes she would say, oh, Diane, I don't agree with someone. She'd laugh about it and move on. Good Lord, I wish I could do that. And so what can we learn from Paul's prayer when we are hurting and struggling? We need to let our love overflow towards one another. One challenge of grief is that no two people experience grief the same. We all do it a little bit differently. And so when someone is struggling or not experiencing grief the way we are, may we be patient and kind with them, share hugs and prayers, mercy and concern. Let me remind us all that there is no Olympic award for the person who has the most significant struggle at the moment because we all do. Instead, let us appreciate our own individual struggles and be empathetic with those who also have them. Paul writes to us, let's get down on our knees before God and be strengthened by our spirit. Whether you can actually get down on your knees physically or not, that's not the point. It's metaphorically that we need to get before God 
and get right with God about this. Prayer should not be our last resort. It should be always be our first chosen option. And then we need to discover Christ in our own lives. Yes, Jesus is part of the church, but Jesus is way more than a church building. Jesus wants to live within our lives, not just within the building. Jesus wants to love us at the very core of who we are, how we live, and what is most important. Recently, I was visiting with a group of friends, and we were talking about grief, and one of the ladies gave this beautiful interpretation of grief. She said that for her, the root of grief is not sadness, it's love. We experience grief because we love something or someone. This person or something means so much to us that when they're not present in our lives, we have sadness and disappointment, but it's always rooted in love. And when we begin to fully love God, then we begin to see just how grand God's power really is. Now, I think one of the challenges in all of this is if God's love and power and might is so fantastic, why does God not stop bad things from happening, right? Like, once again, that's way above my pay grade, okay? We can ask lots of questions. We can shake our heads. Let me first say, I don't think God takes things from us. God did not take Pastor Carol. God does not remove things out of our lives. Sometimes things just happen. And when we begin to see things as happening rather than being taken from us, I think we can find a huge amount of comfort in that. And so then rather than saying, why do these things happen, which is difficult to answer, I'm going to encourage us to ask a different question instead, which is this. Who will be with us on the journey? For me, this is a far more important question than being able to answer why. Because when I see God as being on this journey with us, then I don't have to have all my whys answered. It's up to us whether or not we take God along on the journey, and then maybe it will begin to somehow be less traumatic for us. Paul tells us God is the who that will be with us, the one that loves us deeply and unconditionally, the one who desperately wants to journey with us. I pray we take God with us. There are many situations in our lives that we cannot fix. Bad things that happen, awful things that we wish were different. What we can do in the midst of challenging times is embrace the love. And when we don't know what else to do, I pray we just simply love. Love the person that has disappointed and let us down. Love the person who desperately needs to be loved. And finally, love the God that we serve with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. This is how God loves you. This is how God loves me, warts and all, without any conditions. And may we do the same. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, no matter whatever situation is going on in our hearts and our lives right now, the things that we find challenging, I pray that even when we can't answer the why, that we don't forget the who, and that the who can become what we focus on and come back and see you as the one always with us. Amen. All right, so let's move into a time where we get to share opportunities of joys and concerns. I may do this a little different than what you are used to doing, so can you appease me for a minute or two? We'll begin with the joys, and when someone has a joy that they'd like to share, please do so, and then I'll say the people of the Lord, and we'll respond with praise the Lord. Anyone have a joy to share this morning? Yes.
then let's move into a time of sharing concerns, things that we want to lift up and be in prayer, not only today, but all week long. After something shared, I'll say, uh, pray, uh, the, Lord, the people of the Lord, and you can respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Concerns to lift up this very day. Okay, let's, um, as we come into a time of prayer, we're going to join together and Lord, listen to your children singing. The words are in the bulletin or they're up on the screen. I'll give you a moment to just uh, reflect quietly with God. I'll lead us together in the Lord prayer and then we will join together in the Lord's prayer. So let's join together and Lord, listen to your children praying. Holy God, we just thank you for these moments to be able to pause and reflect and have a hot minute with you where it's just you and us. And you've heard the things that have been spoken aloud. You also know those things that we have just shared with you quietly in our hearts and minds. And so now we offer all of these situations, events, things in our lives up to you with the fullest of confidence that you hear our prayers and you answer them. The challenge is when the prayers aren't answered exactly as we would wish. And so give us patience and understanding that sometimes your view is a much wider, bigger view than what we have. And that even when our prayers aren't answered exactly as we wish, you're still right there. You're with us. You're the one that we can always, always, always turn to. When we come into situations this week that may distract us or are difficult or we're not quite sure what to do, may we turn to you first rather than as our last resort. May you inspire us and challenge us when we come into those opportunities where we could have a variety of choices to make and guide and direct us to make the choice that will be blessed and anointed by you. Help us to be patient with one another. Allow us to be gracious and compassionate. And most of all, Lord, may we deepen our love in you, with each other, for those that challenge us, us as well as those that uh, we find difficult. And so, Lord, may the things that we have reflected upon today be nuggets that we can take with us, not only this day, but all week long. And now we pray together the way Jesus taught the disciples and teaches us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, personally, I find music just a cert a, such an important part of the worship service. And um, I was thinking about, you know, there's so many great songs about love and how we can love God, reflect love in our lives as believers. And yet this is one of the next song. I know it's not one that you are in the hymnal. It's in a little different book. 
but I pray that whether you know it or not, that we can stand together and join together in, oh, how he loves you and me. you to extend your hands and to receive God's blessing this day. Holy God, today we call the present because it's a gift. And may we go out and celebrate the beautiful gift that it is. May we not take it for granted, but reflect upon your grace and goodness in our lives. May we celebrate all that is to be celebrated. May we struggle where we have opportunities to grow. May we know that our bandwidth, when it gets slim, can be shored up in your love. May today be a gift, this week be a gift, every moment, every hour, reflect the love that we see in you. Send us out now, ready to celebrate the gift and the love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we close with Shalom to you. <laughs>